channel let's get stringing here's yet another stringing video this is a head racket uh, it's the first time I've ever seen it it's a called a challenge challenge on the head over here and it says pro up top challenge pro uh, it's got a uh, rounded beam it's not boxed it's not head light if anything it's head heavy I put my finger at the top of the throat and it wants to tip forward the customer has a worn out a worn out grip over here and I'm uh, trying to see if he wants to replace with a uh, new hydro hydrozorb uh, Hydrozor Pro, Head Hydrozor Pro replacement grip, or I could just give him a free uh, over grip, wrap it up for him. Um, however, the issue with that is that um, if he's used to playing without the over grip, and I go and uh, install a new over grip, that's gonna add to about half a size larger. So I mean, either way, even with the uh, new replacement grip over here. Um, as you all know that uh, when it's first installed it's gonna feel uh, thicker and larger as well because it hasn't been compressed but after playing for a few sessions it should compress down to it uh, the correct size anyways without further ado let me start the stringing I'm gonna mount it with the head logo up the racket has a 16 by 19 stringing pattern and for the mains uh, before I cut out the strings I did see that it has skipped holes on the eighth and I will do 50 pounds for him. Not so high and not so low. On my personal rackets, I've been playing at uh, on average 48 pounds or lower these days during the winter. Because things are more stiff during the winter. In case you wonder what are the tensions used by some of the pros, here's um, a picture of uh, what some of the pros use at the recent um, Dallas Open. Uh, I'm gonna give him the Hyper G 17 gauge. I think I'm down to the last string job here. I'm gonna see how much is left on here. Go brand new reel. This racket has six grommet holes in the throat. So we'll start from the throat.
For new customers, I measure their weight balance and swing weight. Even for um, existing customers with brand new rackets, I do that for them for free. So they have a reference for the first time. However, they're, if they're looking to customize or match some more, then I will start charging. I think I'm gonna give them free um, power pads. I don't know if he uses a dampener or not, but he's not very picky with his strings. Matter of fact, he want he actually let me decide what string to get for him, and including the tension as well. So I know he's not that picky. And on certain stiffer rackets, like stiff and it could cause arm pain. So usually in that case, I like putting on the power pass for them, minimize the um, shock and vibration. But it's like a, everything, it's a matter of preference. Some people don't believe that uh, vibration dampeners even dampens any vibration and it uh, actually only dampens and quiets the sound. I hate to get in an argument with people who state that. Apparently, there's some scientific research that backs that up. However, it's, um, it's really contra contrary to my experience. And as you all know, I'm no tennis pro, so if they're saying that pro players are only using the dampeners for sound, then, you know, I'll take the, the word for it. However, me as a 3.5, 4.0, recreational tennis player, I could tell you that shock absorbers definitely dampens the vibration for me, not just sound. Sound doesn't bother me. I use it to quiet down the string bed's uh, vibration and the shock that's transmitted to my arm. So, you know, just like everything to each his own. Whatever makes people happy. So I'm trying to cut these power pads to the right size here. I buy this large uh, strip of leather, suede leather, in quantity, and I cut them up as you can see. I used to cut these in events to save time, and I just ran out of pre cut ones. So use that, that one in the middle and then these two on the sides. That should work. Try not to drop it. This viewer, I don't know if he still watches my video, but he criticizes me of being a so-called pro on Facebook actually. He took a screenshot of me pre-weaving a bunch of my strings, my cross strings, went over to, to Facebook and ripped me a good one on how this so-called pro stringer is doing this and he and that he tried to uh, help me and I wouldn't listen. I've had to delete a couple of his comments from my channel simply because of the fact that I felt that he was trolling me and kind of condescending. I did not ask for anybody's advice if I were. I clearly said if I, I were, I was. And I never stated the fact that I was some kind of pro stringer. Unlike him, I never said that. And I was disappointed the fact that I reported the post to the um, Facebook group's admin as well as Facebook to delete his post for the simple fact that he's trying to ruin my reputation as a stringer and as a not only as a stringer but as a fellow 
person. Basically trying to defame me. You know? I mean, if my business was worth a lot, I think I'd have legal grounds to do a legal action against him. But I'm not. I was just disappointed. However, contrary to my belief, most of the people who, who commented on his post in efforts trying to talk me down to ruin my reputation, most of the comments on, the, on there seemed to support what I was doing. And it points out the fact that he simply wasn't aware of the fact that people have been pre-waving crosses like I did in one of my videos for since ages, including Batman players. And he was the one who was making a, a fool out of him, himself for being uninformed and trying to talk people down as if he's like more superior. Hey, to each his own, you know. Whatever makes you feel good. And I put on there that you string, th you string your way and I string my way, okay? Just like my fellow, my other fellow stringer, um, or bear says all the time. You string it your way, I string it my way. Whatever makes you feel happy. Just don't try to ruin another stringer's reputation. Curious what how much this racket weighs. I don't see any uh oh shit sure do two ninety five Yes. 295 on strong balance. Oh, it's hard to reach. I think it says 32. The beam is pretty thick on this frame. Then I gotta put the third leather pad on here. Yes, and so this stringer try, try to defame me try to tell me that uh, don't string for anybody as if any any only pro stringers like himself is allowed to string for people as you can see I'm no I'm no tournament stringer or anything I'm not raising against time when I string for people and I put my videos out there for any um, mistakes or any anything I did that shows I'm lacking in skill and any constructive advice that viewers give me anybody gives me doesn't matter if you're a touring stringer or experienced stringer or novice I'm, I gladly accept it you know very humble humbly 
I have a civil discussion with people, but I don't talk people down. Even if they're telling me stuff that I think is so simple and I already knew and I've been doing it for a long time. I don't try to make them feel bad. As long as they're trying to help me. But no, not the way this guy talks. Just He just straight up very nasty and trying to shame people and yet he complained about the fact that people don't want to learn from him come on why would I? I put on there on Facebook I said I'm, I gladly take anybody's advice except yours just not you <laughs> and then after so many different comments he said something on there to the effect that oh as long as you learn from somebody, even even if it's not from me. All right, whatever you said. I'm not losing any sleep over it. Whatever floats your boat. You do things your way, I do things my way. The seventh string. On the next string, we'll be we'll be script, skipping the eighth grommet hole. the ninth grama hole for the last string. Now this is for the seventh string. No, it is the last string. Oh, sorry. Looks like I cut these strings a little too short for this frame, so I'm gonna manually add ten percent for the tie off knot. Nope. 
so I'm gonna use this extension trick loop it through the starting now like so and then take the tag in and feed it below the loop so make sure the uh, starting clamp hangs somewhere in front of this diablo I could do 50 pounds with the tile of non tension button. Okay. okay. All right, now I can throw away this uh, extra string. Let's plug for tension. Look at that. The 10% on one side was applied by the machine and the other side was manually added by me. And they sound about the same. I like that. So I'm curious, a question for people. Once I get the process going.
So the question I wanted to ask is, what's the minimum amount of uh, labor charge that you would do to string a tennis racket? Now I do, recently I've, I've been charging five extra dollars for people who don't use my strings. So I've been charging $25. I usually charge twenty dollars labor if they use my strings. I can make a couple extra dollars from selling the strings for profit. If they only use my strings, or if they uh, use natural gut, which requires a little bit more work, I charge twenty-five. Plus the cost of the string. The cost of my string is usually no higher than what Amazon charges. So everybody run their own business with a different business model. So in different areas, uh, cost of living, whatever is all different. Just have to find out whatever is worth worthwhile to you, the time that you spend. How much you value your time and I'm sure the business volume has something to do with it too so recently I got this coach from a club around here who wants to bring me rackets they got pro shops over there that charge a lot of money for players and they're always backed up with work but this guy wants to make a deal wants me to string his racket for $20 and he provides his own strings. And going forward, he brings me rackets, let's say on a weekly basis. And he's looking to strike a deal where I only charge him 12 to $15 labor. They're, 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 they're his clients and I don't sell the strings. He provides the strings. I don't think that's worth it. I don't know what you guys think. I don't think that's worth my time because as you can see, it doesn't take me, I'm not no tournament stringer who strings a racket in 15, I mean, under 15 minutes. It usually takes me at least half an hour, 40 minutes. With natural gut strings, it takes even more. I don't think it's a good deal for me. I feel that he's just looking for a, uh, a sweatshop who can do the labor work for him with little to, to no profit on the labor, no profit on string sales because he wants to sell strings. So I don't think that's a good deal for on my part even if he brings me volume what am I gonna do make a couple dollars from labor which is 
usually you don't make that much profit on labor anyways. I'd be willing to, to do $15 labor on, only if I also be able to sell strings. Because these are his clients, I'm pretty sure he's not gonna give him my direct contact. You know? And if he's selling the strings, I'll do $20 per string job just because it's quantity. And that's fine. But with my own customers, I usually charge 25. So let me know what you guys think. Now I just came back from Southern California. I got a niece out there who played uh, tennis, who played high school tennis a few years back. She's working now. She said that when her coach used to string for her, I don't know if the coach does it himself or she or, or he's or she sub, subcontracts it out, like this coach that I'm talking about. Um, the coach usually charged her forty dollars labor before strings. Now this is Southern California by LA. I'd imagine the cost of living wise is comparable to what we have over here in New Jersey. So think about that. Now if I were to string for this coach who charges $40 and leaving the cost of the strings aside I'm sure he makes a few bucks from the strings as well. He buys them in the reels and charges the cost at least for the um, the pack price. We all know where to get strings. It's no secret. Where to get strings for cheap. Cheaper than the on online retailers like uh, Tennis Warehouse or Tennis Express. So, just that forty dollars in labor alone, without the profits from the uh, strings, he's already making double. He's charging double what a private stringer like me charges. Okay, that and that was a few years ago. We're talking about thinking about thinking about the cost of living that went up during and after the pand pandemic. Now, I mean, if I was out in California. Southern California for twenty dollars, you can barely get a bowl of noodles over there. I mean, fast for fast food, you get a, a combo meal, or whatever. It's over ten dollars. It's hard to get anything under ten dollars these days. Even for something for some food I used to get from some Taiwanese restaurant. 10 years ago, things used to cost under $10. But now they're like 15. Good thing about California is that it's got a lot of choices, a lot of ethnic food from cultures all over the world whatever your taste buds desire whatever your palate is you're able to find it there but they're not I mean the choices are there you can find them all over the street they got literally strip malls over there full of restaurants that sell Asian cuisines But the price is not not cheap.
sure about the lengthy video of this one. Southern California, it's beautiful. Everywhere, LA or east of LA, you can see these mountaintops with peaks full of snow. I mean, it's common for us to get several inches of snow in New Jersey. Matter of fact, we just got eight inches uh, yesterday. But in California, on the grounds in the, in the valley, or in, they don't have plains out there. It's all hilly hills and mountains. And down the valley, um, it might be 50 some, 60 some degrees, but then you see all the mountain peaks around you, the highest points are still full of snow. The landscape, I love the landscape out there. Every day you leave, you leave the home or your house, it's a different scenery. Depending on temperature, the mountain peaks will get different amounts of snow accumulation. And it looks like a different mountain. Every day you open the doors, looking at those mountains, they look like they're different mountains. I don't know. It's not my first time out there in California, but every time I go out there, it seems to amaze me and I wish I could live out there for good. They said that California is one of the few days, few states where, few states where it's possible for you to go climb the mountain and also to go in the in the beach during the same day, easily. I was in Santa Monica. They literally got mountains right right next uh, door, right next door to the beach. And don't forget, you could also go skiing during the same day too. Anyways, I suspect this coach who's offering me 12 to 15 dollars labor, that's what he's doing. He's charging me double for me to do his work. He's, I mean, he's not charging me double. He's just not paying me fairly. He's charging his clients double. I don't care how much he, he charges could charge 50 or 60 dollars labor for all I care but I gotta get what's what's worth it to me in my time let me know what you think or what's your take on it or would you take 15 to 17 to 15 dollars I mean 12 to 15 dollars come on can't even buy it. Can't even buy a combo meal with that price.
last one. over over under over under over under under over 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 under
next thing I'm gonna do is uh, do a stencil for him. I'm gonna do a stencil for him. I'm gonna apply the stencil for him. He has a black racket, so ideally I wanna use black ink. This thing I have is blue. I currently don't have black ink. So this is what I use. Go. I used the uh, the head logo on the butt cap as reference. So that side, it's the right side up. So I'm gonna do one like that. Harder to coat these slick poly strings. So I'm going over more than once without too much dripping over. So that's one side. Flip it over and apply the other side, like so. Try and keep the same distance from uh, top to bottom. I see over drippage. Just try to smooth it out first without squeezing the, the bottle. out some more. That's it. And I keep my bottle upside down. This way, the uh, applicator 
will not ever dry out. At least it hasn't yet. So, I think that'll go on good. Next thing that I'll do is uh, replace his uh, grip. I'm not gonna make a video on that since I've already done it before. So, all right, thank you very much for watching, guys. And uh, have a nice day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ciao.